coming out tonight. Uh, my name is Julia Watson. I live in Iowa City with my lovely assistant, Joe Henniger, my husband in the back. Isn't it usually the guy that says, and my lovely assistant? <laughs> it's my turn. Um, I am a puzzle publisher. I don't actually cut them myself. I am the person who finds the artist and then works with a printer to get them printed and cut and, and delivered and sent off to stores and that sort of thing. So tonight I'm going to talk just a little bit about puzzles and then it's your turn to have a little activity where you get to help assemble a puzzle. So we have a partially assembled puzzle over here. It's the top one up there that is called Fire and Ice. I don't know if, I, I don't want to get out of the view of the camera. I'm, it's supposed to be myself. So it's the top one over here. Um, and we're giving that one away tonight. If you would like to participate in that, all you have to do is put your name on this slip of paper that you got. And there is a basket up front. And we'll either pass it around or you can come put it in later. We're also going to have a drawing for some magnets. I have some little puzzle-shaped magnets. So one person will get a puzzle, and 11 of you, bless you, will get a puzzle-shaped magnet. So that's what your paper is for, and bless you again. Um, if you want to be on an email list, and I have to laugh because I've never sent out an email yet, but I'm going to do it one of these days. Uh, if you want to do that, then please clearly print your email for me, and when I get around to it, because I'm just not real big on the social media stuff yet, I will uh, let people know about things that are happening, and we'll have blog interviews um, with our artists, with some of our artists. So um, let me tell you just a little bit about puzzles after you've already met me. So uh, I am the director of customer, ha customer happiness, so if anything goes wrong, I'm the person to talk to about puzzles. I can't fix the society, I'm sorry. I'm a dissectologist. Are any of you dissectologists? Anybody know what dissectologists? It's a person who loves putting together puzzles. Now, it seems kind of counter to what you would expect because dissect is taking apart, but we're talking about putting things together. So I didn't make up the word, I'm not responsible, but I am a dissectologist. How many of you would say you're a dissectologist? Some of you really like puzzles and the rest of you got dragged here. Is that about right? Okay. Do you know anything about the history of jigsaw puzzles? Is there anybody who can share anything about the history of it? Okay, I've got a little pop question for you then. When do you think the first jigsaw puzzle was created? Do you want to take a guess? Look at it for a second and I'm going to get a show of hands. How many of you think it was A, 1760? That's a long time ago, isn't it? Okay, B, 1810. C, 1870. Or D, 1900? No 1900s? It was actually 1760. And this is a picture, I'm not sure if it's the actual first puzzle, but what happened was a cartographer, who was also an engraver, decided that for some reason, maybe he was talking to the local school teachers, but the kids didn't know their geography. So he made a map, printed it out, stuck it to some wood, and cut it up. He cut the pieces apart by country. This was in London, I believe. Uh, his name was Phil. Now I've forgotten. I knew it today, but now I've forgotten. But his first name was Phil. So good old Phil was the first person to develop a jigsaw puzzle. And it wasn't until the jigsaw itself was developed in the 1800s sometime that they actually became jigsaw puzzles. But before that, they were puzzles. And if you are in... Europe, I am told, I was told this by Germans the other day, if you're in England, you call it a jigsaw. You don't say, I want to do a puzzle. You say, I want to do a jigsaw. Otherwise, they look at you like, what are you talking about? So I'm sure there are different traditions all over the world, but that's one I learned the other day from a German. <coughs> so how popular are puzzles? Some of you didn't raise your hand because you don't particularly love jigsaw puzzles, I guess. But what would you think is the popularity now after COVID? Yes. Pretty popular. So how many puzzles, and I think this is a worldwide statistic, how many puzzles do you think were sold in 2020? Okay, A, 10 million? B, 350 million? C, 650 million? And these are rough numbers. Or 
D, a billion puzzles, was actually 650 million. It was 662 million in the statistics that I read today. I thought that was kind of fun. What are the benefits of doing puzzles? Most of you who like to do puzzles have a reason why you like to do them. What, what would be a benefit? Anybody raise your hand and tell me a benefit of doing puzzles? Did I see? Okay. Relaxation. Relaxation, absolutely. Unless you're really frustrated. <laughs> do you know? It's, I'm sorry? It does depend on the puzzle. It does. You get that frustration going. I totally agree with you. I agree with you. What else? What have you heard about puzzles? Yes. An excuse not to do the chart you're supposed to do. <laughs> I love it. A reason to stay up late, too. Yes, ma'am. Oh, an excuse not to do the chore you're supposed to do. Yeah, that's a good one. Any other benefits that you've heard about? Brain, yes, ma'am. Brain stimulation. Brain stimulation, yes. Something to do with your friends. Yes, community building. Absolutely. It's a great way to, to stimulate a conversation amongst people. Joe and I own an Airbnb, and when we have guests from other countries, we almost always have a puzzle out, and people will come together well, guests from the U.S. too, they come together around the puzzle and get to know each other because it's a great way to have a non-threatening conversation where you don't feel like you have to talk, but you can talk. So that's definitely a great benefit of it. There's been a lot of research about the benefits of puzzles. Some websites will claim that everything has been research-based, but that is not entirely true. But there is research that you will have improved memory, particularly visual memory. You will have better visual spatial reasoning. Now, these are not sexy, exciting things, but they're really important. And there are a lot of uh, psychologists and medical practitioners who definitely say that it will help prevent or delay, not prevent, but delay the onset of Alzheimer's and dementia. And they encourage um, that people do puzzles to help when they have problems like that. Um, we have had a series of neurology residents stay with us. And it, to, uh, to a person, they said, yes, we tell our, our patients who've had a stroke, do jigsaw puzzles. It's good for you. Um, some of the other things that we've talked about stress reduction a little bit, it does help increase your attention to detail. Now, some of these are things that are just observed, right? So there's not necessarily research on everything. But these are things that most people would say be, are, are true about puzzles when they work them. Um, it does help with problem-solving skills as well. And you might think about how, how is that? Well, how do you address your puzzle? How are you, you know, do you start in the middle? Do you start at the sides? What happens if you hit a, a wall and everything's the same color? You know, how are you going to figure out what you're going to do with your puzzle. That may not be the biggest one, but it's one of them. And finally, the feeling of accomplishment is huge for a lot of people. You saw our friend Chensi playing on the puzzle because she loves it so much. She, would, she celebrates every time she finishes a puzzle. And how many of you who do puzzles run your hand over it when it's done? Anybody here do that? Yeah, that's a good feeling, isn't it? And it's kind of weird to people who don't do puzzles, but the rest of us know what we're doing. How do you choose the right puzzle for yourself or for a gift? There are certain characteristics of puzzles that you have to think about. I mean, it's not just pick a puzzle off a shelf, oh, that's pretty good, you take it. One of the things that you want to think about is, is the standard cut what you want? Now, a standard cut, if you can see them, there are four little places for tabs. They're either tabs that stick out or places for the tabs to go in. We call them hemis and outies in our house, but you can call them whatever you want. That's standard. That is typically an easier puzzle to do. This is a random cut. As you can see, some of them are really weird, and some of them also look like standard puzzle pieces. But it, none of the two, or none of the puzzle pieces should be exactly alike. That's one of the things you want to make sure of. If you get a puzzle and two pieces are exactly alike and they fit in the same, you know, and two of them could fit, that is a bad puzzle. You don't want that. So you're gonna, when you're searching for a puzzle, with puzzle, you want to look for a reputable puzzle company or one that you, you've heard of, you know of, that they have good quality. And we'll come back to quality in a minute. Um, glossy finish. How many of you hate doing puzzles with a glossy finish? Any of you? 
where the light is so, it's so shiny that the light just blinds you and you can't quite see the color? Well, I will admit that four of our puzzles have a glossy finish. They were the first four that we did, and we still love our puzzles. But when I finally found that those were made in China, when I finally found a U.S. printer, and there are U.S. printers, but mostly they don't care about little people like us. Um, when I finally found a U.S. printer, I was able to say, I want matte finish. And matte finish is the non-shiny finish, and it's much easier to work even in glaring light. But you know, that doesn't make a, a shiny puzzle less appealing to some people. So it's, it's truly your choice. The number of pieces is critical. If you are buying a puzzle for a little kid, you're not going to buy a thousand piece puzzle. All of ours are 1,000 pieces. They're, ours are challenging. And I will tell you, if you get one of our puzzles, it's not going to be the easiest thing you've ever worked. We designed it that way because we think it's good for the brain. Um, and then, uh, for, for folks with dementia, you would want something that has great big pieces and fewer pieces, maybe 30 pieces, and a recognizable image that is something that they can easily do. The difficulty level is really important. This puzzle was pretty, pretty hard. This is not one of our puzzles, um, and it was very difficult, as you might imagine. You have to look every tiny little bit. Um, and then, of course, for children and for folks with dementia, you're not going to have super difficult puzzles. Finally, the visual, or not finally, almost finally, the visual appeal is important. If you like Surrey Night and you love this painting and you love to do that, then great. I, I will tell you, this is a really difficult puzzle. I, I almost threw it out the window. <laughs> and it's not mine. But, but it's, it's a pretty picture. So find a picture that you like or that the recipient of your gift will like, something that appeals to them, and that will help. Uh, also, the final thing is quality. And I talked about this a little bit ago. Um, our puzzles, not, not that I'm trying to do a big sales pitch here, but, but one of the things I was looking for, because I'm a puzzle lover, is I didn't want really thin stuff where the paper peels off and you know things like that. So you want to look for a quality puzzle. And there are many quality puzzles outside. Out out there. And another thing that I forgot to put on here is what's it made of? There are puzzles made of wood. Again, like the very first puzzle, there are puzzles that are actually made of wood. There are puzzles made of plastic. There are puzzles that are see-through that's all clear, that you have no design on at all. There are puzzles that are all one color. There's a, a huge variety of puzzles. There are 3D puzzles. So there's a, a world of puzzles to choose from. Just find something that appeals to you that you want to do. So now, let's puzzle. So I'm going to give you, you can tell me whether you want to do a piece of the puzzle. Oops, where did I put them? Over here. Uh, you can tell me whether you want to do a piece of the puzzle or puzzle all by yourself or whether you want to share and do it with someone. As we said, community is nice. There is a bag of about nine pieces. Some have more, some have less. This shouldn't be incredibly challenging. Most of them have an edge. So that should help you, even if you don't like puzzles. And when you get your little puzzle section done, slip the cardboard, or you can do it on top of the cardboard, slip it under, carry it over, and put it into the puzzle. See if you can figure out where it goes, and put it right into the puzzle, and we'll help. Um, oh, I should be back. I'm sorry, I don't have my mask on. Uh, Joe will pass them out, and if, you, if we run out of puzzle groups, we can uh, make more. I suggest that you work with someone because it's more fun, but you can you can do it by yourself if you like. And when he's done, we'll pass around the basket and you can put your names in it. Any questions? Okay, if you have questions, just raise your hand and I'll come and talk to you.